All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the Super Light Coupe Builds. In this video, we're going to focus on fabricating up the intercooler mounting brackets. In the last video, if you remember, I mean, we, we got the body on the car uh, just so we can get the front clam on the car to make sure that we can that the front uh, clam or nose would clear the radiator and the fan shroud. And then I fabricated these, uh, these more inboard, inboard brackets for the radiator. So that is all ready to go uh, over to the welder, but due to coronavirus, you know, I'm not gonna see the welder probably for a couple months. So we're gonna move on on the build. So at this point of the build, what I really wanna do is get all the components or, or the majority of the components laid out, you know, find a place for things like the intercoolers, the uh, electric vacuum pump for the brake booster, the hydraulic pump for the front end lift system, uh, even the, the windshield washer bottle. And then in the back of the car, there's a number of components that we have to install. and. You know, back here you see a couple things. So uh, that's going to be the dry sump oil tank. So I actually just ordered it this week from a company called Aviade, and that's going to be a two and a half gallon, two and a half gallon dry sump oil system. Uh, that's the location where I'm going to put it. I had to sort of mock it up just to make sure that you know what I'm ordering is going to fit in the car. Uh, you know, different builders approach the oil tank in, in different ways, and this is this is really the the approach I'm taking. And then here you have one of the inner coolers uh, with some cardboard protecting the face of it, and I mocked up the I mocked up the bracket out of plywood, and you can see it's going to get fed by that side vent on the side of the body, and then I'll actually put a, a fan. And fan shroud on the back of the intercooler bracket and then that'll blow the air out the back of the car okay and you know these intercoolers are from uh, from a 2018 Camaro uh, ZL1 which has the same engine the LT4 engine and basically uh, you know you get two of these in a set uh, they're made by Mishimoto and they're you know, they're all aluminum, so, so they're, they're sort of nicer and uh, more efficient than the stock, than the stock cores. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to use two of these. When you, when you add up the surface area of these two, it equals the same uh, cooling area of a stock C7 Z06 intercooler, which normally would get installed in front of the condenser which goes in front of the radiator. But, you know, in my opinion, I really don't want any additional items in front of the condenser because I, I just want this radiator to be as performant as possible. That's why I put those, those brushless, uh, you know, radiator fans on it. And I'll do the twin intercoolers on the uh, back of the car. Uh, I may wind up putting two more of these coolers because they're small, uh, and this is just a cardboard mock-up of a bracket, but I may put two in the front nose, and, you know, here's the front of the car, but I literally can feed, you know, I literally can feed that inner cooler with the brake duct, and it'll tuck in nicely in the front. So, you know, that'll be really efficient you know, as the car drives down the street, and then, you know, if you come to a stop, you have the, you have the rear intercoolers with the fan shroud uh, taking over and just cooling all the water in the intercooler system. So anyway, that's sort of a, a long explanation, but we will get uh, started with making that bracket. I'm not gonna go step by step as far as uh, fabricating it up, but you'll see all the parts when it's done, and then we'll, we'll We'll see how it looks on the on the frame. All right. Well, we're down in the basement at the Joel K workshop. This place is an absolute pigsty. That's how you know. That's how you know a genius is at work. Uh, but anyway, these are the parts that we have to make up out of aluminum. So 
we've got this uh, this top piece and you can see I've notched out the areas and uh, so these just sort of go together and that's screwed together I use like uh, M5 screws and once I get the screws tapped and everything then I'll wind up pocketing some of this aluminum out to lighten it up uh, but I bought this 3 8 inch aluminum because it's thick enough to hold hold the screws okay so here's the uh, Here's the big piece of metal. We'll make those top pieces, and then we've got we've got the uh, two and a half inch uh, two and a half inch thick pieces. So we'll machine these up, and then we'll take a look at All it. All right. Well, I couldn't help myself. I had to do a little work in process. I couldn't just show the completed bracket. But you know, this is the the mocked up piece with the tapered end. Uh, I basically used a circular saw to cut the bulk of this off, and then used the mill to square it up. And I just drew some lines and measured the angle. I don't have one of those vices that uh, you know you can dial in a particular particular uh, angle. So what I do is I just use the circular saw and I cut, you know, I, I cut a block of wood, and then this turns out to be the the angle I put the I put the vice at. But you can see, you know, I cut one side off. It looked good, so I'll do the rest of them and. You know, I, I talked about the place being a pigsty, but I wasn't kidding. But you know what? If I actually put everything away, I'd never be able to find a damn thing. So I like it. I like it just like this. More work in process. So uh, let's see. I drilled out the bottom plates, a uh, couple holes in each one of those for the to uh, locate the pins that are welded onto the bottom of the inner coolers. Now I'm going to drill the top holes, and the top holes are a little tricky. Uh, basically, you've got two mounting pins, and you got the openings for the input and the output. And you know, these are handmade intercoolers, and you know, handmade is a code word for nothing is symmetrical. So if you look at this, like the left hole is three and nine sixteenths from the center, and the right hole is three and a half. And then this is the other intercooler, where this is three and five sixteenths and then uh, three and three quarters. So, you know, from left to right on each intercooler, and then from the left intercooler and the right intercooler, they're not even close to being the same. So it's a good thing I took the time to really uh, pay close attention because I didn't want to have to waste aluminum and drill the holes in the wrong place. So anyway, now I've got to decode all my hieroglyphics and drill out these aluminum pieces and we'll see how it matches up. All right, I figured we'd uh, test fit these and just take a look. Got them both in the car. I mean, I, I sort of like the way they look. They just look so cool. So cool in the chassis. But anyway, you can see that you know, the holes came out great. They lined up with the input and the output of each intercooler. And then they also lined up with the pegs, both on the top and the bottom, to hold, hold the intercooler, intercoolers in place. So the next step really is to enlarge those holes for the pegs and insert grommets into the top and bottom plates. Uh, once I do that, it will uh, provide a final, uh, final location for those plates and then I'll machine the side panels and bolt it all together. Okay, so we'll take a couple more segments and then we'll call it a wrap. Okay, so here's a little more work in process. So against my better judgment, I actually did clean clean the workbench because I actually needed to to drill these holes, and because these uh, these parts are too tall for the mill, I needed to make some room and use the vise. So I decided to bite the bullet and clean up my workbench. You could also see the Joel K cup of coffee. Now my preferred coffee is Pete's Coffee with two Splenda and some coffee meat and that does the job for me. That gets me, uh, gets me going in the morning but anyway enough of that talk. Uh, let's see here's the uh, bottom bracket so you can see uh, I enlarged these holes for the grommets that are going to be inserted to cushion the intercooler. Uh, each one of these top and bottom brackets 
have a channel in them so that when I tighten up everything, it perfectly aligns and it's square and it's very strong. Uh, you can see the, the back part I pocketed out to lighten it up and also the grommets are are designed for a thinner metal. So I went with 3 16 inch uh, grommets. I, I could bring that down to an eighth of an inch or even a sixteenth of an inch, but I think I'll leave it the way it is. Uh, this is the top plate. You can see a matching channel here. And then I also pocketed out this area to lighten it up a bit. And also for the larger grommets that sit on the top of the intercooler. And the, these are the uh, these are the side pieces that I have not pocketed out yet, and I, I may do that at a later date. And then I just basically drill these holes by hand, and then and then hand uh, you know hand tap you know hand tap these uh, these threads. Okay, so here's a view of a finished uh, intercooler bracket. I've got all the screws in. So these are M5 screws. Uh, plenty of clamping force to keep this thing together. I mean this thing is just rock solid uh, You see the grommets Fit in nicely and then an M6 screw and a washer will hold Will hold the intercooler attached to the top plate. So this this bottom plate really is just uh, side and bottom is really Really there to hold the uh, fan shroud on and that's why I can lighten them up quite a bit uh, if we zoom in you know, you can see these, you know, these edges, just really tight, I mean, just perfectly square. You know, I'm really happy with the way this came out. Uh, just to give you a sense, I mean, it's about 30 hours worth of work to do two of these. By the time you figure out how to cut all these angles and do all your measurements and make a few mistakes, you know, one of these, one of these plates I actually... Here you can see I, I actually have a broken a broken tap in there so I have to I ordered a new piece of metal and I'll fabricate that up okay so anyway we're getting close uh, the last segue will we'll show the completed brackets on the car okay well here's the final segment of the video it's nighttime here in New Jersey but we'll put a wrap to the intercooler episode uh, there they are Positioned where they're going to wind up going. They'll you know, get fed by by those side intakes. I mean, I think they just look great. I mean, I don't know how I'll finish them. I mean, I, I may polish them to a mirror finish. I may do a brush finish. Maybe I'll even powder coat them. Uh, also, I'm going to add a sister bracket. Uh, either you know, either to the side, notch out a side in here. And put a, a 3 8 inch plate there or maybe put a sister bracket all the way down on the bottom but anyway I think they look great uh, one other thing that's cool about these they have the quick disconnect fittings so I use the, the GM fittings and you know it's just easy to disconnect those and take them off so I'm pretty psyched about that a couple other things to point out it's actually working on a few other things. So there's the Aviad oil tank or Aviade oil tank. You can see I, I have the first version of the plywood brackets in place. I don't know if that's the final, the final location or the final way I will attach, attach that to the car, but that's where it's at. I've mocked up uh, the battery. Uh, you know that aluminum tank may look familiar if you remember the the fuel system episode that is actually the fuel swirl tank I'm going to repurpose that as the intercooler reservoir and then that will feed the intercooler pumps uh, and lastly uh, here's a mock-up of, of sort of the route that the air intake is going to need to go uh, just to first pass at it I may fabricate that up out of aluminum or maybe even try my hand at, at carbon fiber. But that will mate up to that uh, Cobra head intake that I, I made in one of the earlier episodes as well. And then if we, we walk around the front of the car, 
uh, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff positioned here. So we've got, let's see, we've got the reservoir for the clutch, and that's the washer bottle. I think I'm going to wind up leaving the power brake reservoir right where it is. Uh, this, this pump right there, that's for the hydraulic lift system. Uh, this is for the brake uh, vacuum pump. That's an electric vacuum pump. You have the AC dryer and then the reservoir for the, the lift kit. So, you know, the idea right now is uh, I'm going to, you know, we're going to get the body off the car and now I'm going to start to build brackets for all these, all these components that need brackets and temporarily mount them to the car. And then I'm going to run the uh, cooling tubes, the AC tubes and the heater tubes, and the intercooler hoses. And essentially, you know, if I can locate, you know, each component and connect it, you know, connect it uh, together and have enough room for everything and make all the components removable and serviceable, you know, I'm in pretty good shape. Okay, so a lot going on on the build here. Uh, the next episode will probably just, uh, I'll just be uh, finishing up some brackets for these components and then we'll start to route the heating and AC and cooling tubes. Okay, so thanks for watching and take care.